The audio. Hello and welcome Ooh. to Weasel Shot. Gamers, dreamers, all. Oh, I forgot to adjust the roll 20 window to be correct. Right, I'm crazy. Hello, welcome. Uh, I say that flippantly, but we take mental health seriously here on a Diesel Shot. And we do not stigmatize it at all. Um, hello, welcome what? to our Fool's Moon Entertainment sponsored live stream. Uh, Arc Spire, a Worlds Without Number, and linked anthology series about. Some very special people who go to very special places. And presently, that special place uh, involves uh, a hostage situation, cultists, a brain in a giant jar, and uh, imminent mortal combat. So, uh, without really further ado, I would say... Um, round one. Fight! Um, before we get going, though, Can't remember... <laughs> There's three, there's three ways to impact the flow of the game. One, channel points. Bottom right, you can give faction influence points or a dangerous to go alone to people. Faction influence points, specify one of the three factions. Exclamation mark Arcspire for more info on that. Um, or, you can uh, be dangerous to go alone, which that's an item or insight in the moment of need of a certain character who you designate. There is also another way to influence the game, which is there's a bit menu. Scroll into the about section, you'll see it. It's things from player rerolls to more enemy hit dice and mooks to even uh, a full heal without invoking system strain for the party. Not a full. Everyone gets healed, but it's not an automatic full HP. Uh, and yeah, player rerolls. So please consider the bit menu and the magic surge, the, the surge meter on the left hand side of the map. The right of the Twitch chat in the announcement box. When that reaches fifty dollars and this or any stream and it rolls over between them, a surge will happen here. It'll be Surge of the Legacy, the source of magic on this dirt, this world. And uh, wild things have happened. People have stepped into spell books, uh, the the traversal mechanisms of the world have gone non Euclidean, um, magical floods have uh, enveloped the realm. All sorts of things can occur when that bar pops. So please consider if that's your cup of tea. But now with uh, no further adieu, I would say let's let's left to right set the scene before you roll initiative so that I don't like immediately lock you guys into the the iron tyranny of the turn order and action economy. Cass has just opened <laughs> the door to a totally fucked scene. Daria and Ametz have a direct view on that. Renric, Viv down the hallway, but you know, could steal a glimpse. Ametz, how would you be reacting like the moment you see this ish going down? There's a weird mirror, flowing green lights, walls and shit you don't understand, a hooded figure bearing a weapon. I mean, I really only see like this bit over here right now. So I think Ametz is very gonna be very quietly and very much against this wall Lee. And on the like the bottom corner of this wall gonna be creeping in to peek to peek at what's right. going on. You're, you're gonna get cheeky peeky. You are gonna see a a, a bound peasant in here who cried for his life. See so everyone did hear that. And he's like, please save me and uh, he's like oh save him is more like what he said but you know um and that's but he can't be scared and cringe at the same time <laughs> there's a certain stoicism to the well no everyone knows that the, the french accent is always scared the french accent is just scared and horny combined oh yeah it's french. french the language of retreat and submissive wow uh diesel <laughs> shot diesel shot is not All a francophobic right. channel uh and you know what? I remember there were wars. There were wars before World War One. Fun fact about history. Um, so, Pat, um, yeah. Oh wait, do we get to name the name of the channel? The War Channel. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the welcome <laughs> to the War Surprise, Channel. Surprise, we're history. Channel. Yeah, this. No, I mean, mine's the Peloponnesian Wars, obviously. That's fair. Oh, See, God. the thing is that Alcibiades was in it. <laughs> Uh, also buy a on multiple sides. <laughs> also oh, buy these nuts. Anything he was involved in just gets funnier. Um, all right, so Cass, <laughs> that's what's happening behind you. You've taken in this scene. You're a woman of action. Your spikes bristle. 
Uh, your metal is heat hot against your skin from the skull and you're traversing the, uh, the shaft. There's a strange brain in a jar before you. These scions of a dark unknown entity from beyond stand before you amidst some foul ritual in which innocent life has already been lost and they yet threaten more. How in this instant would Cass, Fenborn of the Reclaimers, choose to act? I'm not sure which one to kill, but I'm gonna kill some fuckers. <laughs> I'm gonna charge. Um... Okay. Like, like a child who has too many Christmas presents, they're overstimulated, they can't decide which one to open, and they just have a meltdown. Okay, so you, one. important uh, note can here. I, can I make you, an attack? You are, so, I would let you, they were mid-ritual. You could potentially turn this into an ambush. But I will say this. Um, does Cass give any care for anything other than advancing to attack? Do you, do you, do you no, know? but it's we traps. Be one liner like, Oi! Whatever you're doing there, it's far less important than what's gonna be at your neck. Cool. So you come up, you got, got a your, very good one liner. You've got you've no, got your you got your you, you have your blade <laughs> up, right? Your shield forward, your blade up, you're about to do the hip pivot twist to hack down. Uh when you feel inextricably seen, observed by the universe. Hui Klo, and in the camera's lens, you are trapped in internal impressum beyond relief or change as you roll Ooh. me a mental save as your body intersects with the green beam between the mirrors. What? Uh, snap. Cool, mirror cultist powers. Well, I guess just mirror powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cass is so, not a smart woman. Cass, um... <laughs> Yeah, so like craziest thing the craziest thing happens here, homie. Um you see um a a as if though um as if though a silvered mirror uh held up against you in the the green glowing light of the room, another figure emerges Equidistant from the center of the beam to you, and rise out and swing some uh, some shimmering mirror of your actions towards the victim. And now you make your attack. Okay. And. Ooh. That's yeah, a miss. Okay, so probably a good thing. Well, so here's the thing: you're sh you're gonna pop them for shock. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, to be fair, that was like a shocking assault you just did. One might say. Your blade comes down. Your long sword bites at the neck of your foe, wreathed in uh, thick white robes, face obscured. And yeah, so you gain one uh, one system strain as you see uh, in the corner of your mind uh, this this mirror copy make a, a monkey see monkey do reaction towards this man who uh, collapses even though he has no visible physical wounds as you do manage to cut at the edge of the prince's popper for your shock. Uh, Daria, you've just seen Cass pop in on some cult shit. Uh, how would you be acting in this moment? Yeah, so I would uh, come and, you know, stand over here and uh, see the situation and be like, release the civilian or I shoot that brain thing. And, hmm. you know, prepare to do that. That is fascinating. Give me a charisma convince. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Is that like, error, okay. Or... It just yeah. I mean, I got like a nine. Okay. Oh, oh, the oh there's a plus. There was a plus one put in there somewhere towards the end. Yeah, I know, but I didn't put it in there. It's just I, no, no. What happened was you deleted the mod. You deleted the zero. I think. I didn't. Like, there's just no mod. 
I mean, like, I know it causes this error. I didn't re remember yeah. doing it or doing it intentionally. We'll, we'll just yeah, have to yeah, move we'll, on. Yeah, no, we'll move on. You roll a nine. You roll the nine. The move on. I just wanted to be sure it wasn't, like, a problem with the sheet today. Yeah, you roll a nine. Uh, yeah, uh, you don't immediately see the repercussions of that, but those who hear Daria speak, that's a pretty forceful negotiator's voice you've just heard. And Renrick, uh, you see this going down. Cass is charged in. Daria's raised the crossbow and listed the demands. Ahmet's is in sneaky mode. Uh, you've heard what you've heard be screamed. Definitely sound like the schlick of a blade cutting flesh in there. What would you do at this point? The important note, the, the this vessel before you that floats as if though magnetically pulled between the walls has not moved in, in, appreciably since you've been looking at it. Except for when Cass passed by. Hmm. Yep. Um, Ren Eric would basically be like, well, here we go again. Uh, upon seeing Cass rush in. Uh, and would basically run in after her. Um, he'd do like a little side eye at the, uh, the floating vessel, but would otherwise uh, just kind of run past it. All right, so you're keeping an eye on the floating vessel, and um, this isn't certainly speaking turn order, so do you want to try and be in the room when combat starts? Uh, yeah. All right, give me a strength or dex exert then, just to see if you can hoof it. Otherwise, you'll be right. Sure though. thing. Oh, oh that's weird. maybe it is a sheet thing. Oh, it is an issue with the sheet, I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I'm like, they're telling you I did put in a plus or anything. As I, as I read that, you uh, you got a five? Yes, <laughs> that's right. You you find yourself right by the, uh, the entrance to the door, but not quite within as combat begins. Vivienne Helois. You are on the corner with Crabulon and a deceased Charné de Peasant. So, what do you do as you find yourself in this scenario? Well, I'm at my strongest when I can isolate a group of enemies or when I can buff Cass. And thanks to Cass, I can do neither of those. <laughs> <laughs> Cass is great at tactics. <laughs> Tactics like a rook. Go forward, trade for knight. Um, all right, let's see, let's see. Um, Next with limitation, resounding echo. One visible ally. Unfortunately, Cass, you seem to be invisible because I have a wall in the way. Damn it. Unvisible. Um, anybody else like to punch things and want some system strain? I like to punch things. All right. Well, um, let's let's rock your world, Renneret Carver, and I'm going to cast. Um, I'm going to cast the resounding temporal echo, which basically means you get an extra. Um, actually, I can do up to three people. So, and you don't actually have to use it. So, I'm going to give my whole party other than cast. Damn it. Oh god, it's this spell. Yes, so it does. Five rounds, okay. Nice. You have wow. an extra main action every round for five rounds, but every time you use it, you gain an extra system train. Okay, amazing. I've done my part. Uh, now y'all take care of it. <laughs> All right, um, the resounding temporal echo reaches out and hails, hello harpoon as our mighty warriors charge into battle. Hey, they be victorious. Um, it uh, fills you uh, with a flowing celerity and it rings out in the hall, uh, called to snow that uh, their days through as a woman named Vivian Helwa had come to do some business with an opera voice on her hip. Pop Royce on her head. Hey, 
I guess the initiative is still working, but yeah, I know. So we're popping initiatives. The prince's popper goes on his yeah, own. Yeah, I think, oh. I think it's about it. time. Uh, Mech is going. Oh wait, ooh, I get two. Oof. And Viv, we do assume that uh, dear dearest Crabby Lawn goes on your turn. Perfect. And I am slow. Let me Effortlessly. See. Incredibly. I mean, we stand a slow queen, it must be said. We are both slow. Look at that. Oh. Oh my god, twinning! I think I'm reading really, really in a room full of cultists. <laughs> so reeling from the uh from the <laughs> things that I have caused. <laughs> so Amets, you've taken a moment to hang back and study the situation. Could you give me a whiz notice? Okay. Go off work tomorrow, Harpoon? Awesome. Party time. Here. It just it did the wrong one. I don't know. I'm confused. Oh. Uh, but I, I I will change that in my sheet just so it's always was notice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that someone pushed a bad update. So it's mm -hmm. two plus three plus two plus one. Uh, two plus three plus two plus two. That's so nine. that would be two plus three Ten. plus two plus two. That'd be nine. That's four plus uh, five. Four which plus is nine. five. Oh yeah, nine. You're right. All right. So yep. you see nine. in the mirror. You see past this ghostly visage. You see the mirror. The mirror reflects something. And before you look too closely, your wisdom tells you you shouldn't look too near. But you look past that, <laughs> and you see that this wall flows with sigils like those found on the pillars outside, fluidly within this green membrane, almost like the, the pulsing of a freshly ripped open stalk of a green plant, how it oozes with moisture, but restrained behind a wall as if of glass unseen. And... You get the feeling that that brain is connected to this place. Anyway, it is your turn here at the top of the well, round. Uh, I just heard a guardian threaten to destroy a brain. I know guardians generally keep to their words, uh, so I have to do something first, which is I want to see what this brain is thinking. Ah, think oh. brain. Uh -huh. That is Biggest quite the decision. Brain. So your brain reaches out to this alien intelligence. Oh, you feel a mind there. It's gonna end. It is. Great. As if though a great and roiling sea, a cacophony from across the void between the stars, Ooh, you sense something here. You apprehend its surface the feelings, but to feel as it feels is not something your gray matter has been designed to do. To comprehend its nature is a study in itself. Roll me a mental save. Oh, fun. And yet, you peer. And though the knowledge is forbidden, Amets, you glean it. And as Amets focuses the surface apprehension, they obtain an insight. Hmm. This mind exists in a state of eternal or at least momentary bliss it is content it considers all manner of things as if though the flowing vein or coursing river of some grand titan fallen across half a continent spreading splayed there in blissful corpse-like slumber and this but an ant hive on a mole of its sundered flesh. It knows no want, no pain, no needs truly, just a sense of observation. And it is always eager, as if though receptive to something that it's not quite sure of, but would take quickly this to any suggestion. 
if phrased properly. And you feel there is still a lack there. An absence that the mind courses around. As if though okay. some... Some... Some cork in the bottle that has been popped. Interesting. Uh, well, that's my main action, and I don't plan on entering the death room as a little bunny rabbit. So, uh... Mm. That's true, you are currently a Aww, cute little bunny fun. rabbit. Yeah. So, alright, so that's the... the I will just sort of just pray to myself, don't, don't, don't murder the brain, don't murder the brain. It's too interesting. All yeah, right. don't say that out loud or anything. He's... Oh, no, I do say that out loud. I'm saying that, uh, quietly, so that they don't hear the funny rabbit talking, but I'm like, that brain is super interesting, don't murder it. I'm like, Not okay, murder the interesting part brain. Plan. Part of the, I think it's part of, it feels like it's part of the, uh, it, it feels like it is part of the complex. Not theirs, but they're mm -hmm. trying to reach it somehow or something like that. Right. So you've got the crossbow raised up against the brain. Uh, the cultists have yet to have their turn. You see... I mean, it's hard to make out, but like, you can see that you have a, your words have arrested the Prince's Popper uh, and would dominate his acts were it not for the fact that Cass Fenborn's blade is presently cutting into them, uh, which slightly distracts mm -hmm. them. But they do seem to still be to be thinking about what you've said and planning some sort of reaction. Uh, how would you act? Do you want to keep an action ready to follow through on the threat? Do you want to change course? Yeah, I mean, I guess, because, like, I don't know how they're going to react, which is, you know, like, even if I'm not going to shoot the brain, I'd still at least bluff that and see what they do. So... Yeah, like, in a real fight, I would wait to see what they did first. You yeah. don't utter a threat and then do something else random. All right, yeah, you keep, the, the purpose. You, you keep the crossbow trained on it. Renrick, it is your turn, Rick. Are you ready to carve your name in the turn history? God damn it. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, so... Would Renrick have heard what Amets was just whispering? I would assume so. Okay. You're also expecting um, the bunny rabbit to speak, so you have a bit of a leg up there. Alright, so I have many questions, but no answers currently. But I'm going to mm -hmm. run into the room. Um, and... You see a strange hey, reflection to the opposite side. Of the yeah, you see the brain, the strange green reflection to the side of Cass. To Cass, parts in intersected by a green beam, and little splays of the light touching her metal armor fly up into the walls and ceiling. Which is a strange, overwrought green substance. There's a gash in the western wall of it here. You see, overall, there are three regular cultists and one, the likes which you've not seen before, in a heavy white robe. Um, they seem to immediately have a charismatic aura about them and uh there is this mighty brain the size of perhaps a human body stretching from ceiling to floor suspended in a jaw uh, a glass tube of liquid um does the the body double is it corporeal it appears to be ethereal you can see like, does through it look it. like it's physically there you can see through it. Okay. In your experience, it doesn't mean it's immune to physical damage, but it could mean that it's resistant. It's also possible that it is merely an illusion. Right. Um, okay. Well, my first objective is the cult test. So I'm assuming that I can do all of this. I would like to move to the left and attack. All right, yeah, you run up, and the cultist may very well be getting done up. Uh, let's see uh, the first pop of the uh, turn order. 
And are your fists stoned up by this point? Or are you not quite there yet? Um, I... No, I have only okay. one system strain. Alright, you walk in, you hook... Holy shit! You give him the fucking I'm left! Wanted. You give him the fucking left hook! <laughs> The cult is like, <laughs> uh, like, like whips out a blade. They're about to fight. Right, they're like, this man has no weapons, and then you just absolutely pile drive him in the cheek. His neck snaps, snaps back. <laughs> he clatters into uh, the green behind him. It warps and twists as if they were trampoline, and then this guy just thuds to the ground, unconscious, dropped like a sack of potatoes. Boom, done. When Wendrick does Beautiful. the run-up, cultists do in fact get done up. Remember the first time you fought these guys? You're like, I'm fighting for my life out here with the stick. You've come. <laughs> Wendrick's come so far. Yep, I do remember. <laughs> I'm like, this is my revenge. This re <laughs> Wendrick's um... revenge should be the name of this episode. And uh, you can't split, move, and shoot in this game. So oh unless my God, you have yes. a, oh, I love uh, it. Unless you have an on turn, you want to pop from where you are. That's your go. Uh, well, I speed. use the, um, you, what you is it called? You can get an extra main action to do to a next go to another place. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah we yeah, forgot yeah. about the, the spell. Yeah, yeah. If you're willing to take the uh, yes. one system straight every time they use it, right? Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, you are um, so what I would like to then do, I want to go over here behind this cultist and threaten them. Oh, um. Shit. Now you've just and uh, basically be like, all right, everybody stop. Um, let's talk this out. <laughs> <laughs> Derek calls it, I'm a healer. If, if that was alive, I, I could probably fix that. Amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the Renric go. They're looking at you. Um, By the way, I, well. I'm I'm still like poised to attack. Yeah, you're still you're still you're it's... still like wound up to you're still in the, the fighting stance. It's you've just up, yeah. you you've opened an aggressive negotiation. Yeah, I'd give a give me a charisma convince. Exactly. <laughs> charisma convince. All right. Do I get a bonus for uh, downing <laughs> one of them this round? I would say you get a bonus because of Daria's early success, like a modifier of one. They're more, they're more arrested, they're more trying to see a way out of this. Well, you know. Uh, <laughs> you, you, know. Have, you have gotten better at punching people. Um, that's that's the Renric go. It's the, it's the Prince's Popper's turn. I still have a negative on Charisma. The Prince's Popper steps five feet here and interposes himself between Daria and the Brain. It's like a big brain tube, so you can still shoot the tube. And you know, you're not quite sure how brain tubes work, but you're assuming that's not good for the for the brain inside. Uh and um The Prince's Popper sort of uh stares out at you with silver white eyes and They raise an open hand towards you, Daria. With that proc, you're ready to action to shoot the tube, or would you would you not be? I mean, like in a spellcasting fashion. No, I'm gonna go with yes. The seems like it's probably a, a right. spell. Uh, pop your shot from this is cultist. I believe you of all people are aware of the <laughs> chains of ineluctable spell. Oh, oh god. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ooh, Having seen bad. our own party oh. member use it. Uh, there is a shot. splash and sploosh of liquid that begins to drain out as, uh, yeah, the crossbow bolt tinks in and just straight up breaks through the tube and enters into the waters with the brain. It begins to, to drain oh. liquid and the Brain writhes and wriggles. Is the brain less happy? The brain is kind of like feeling like suddenly like a like a a, 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 w a wave of bad, like it, its sublime life has been interrupted by a displeasure, and it is overwhelming in its singularity. Um, and the prince's popper um, 
looks out and shouts, No! And rather than doing whatever... I mean, you don't know what the Princess Popper might have been thinking to do, but seeing that, they, like, turn around and, like, hold their hand up against uh, the, the the crossbow in port hole, but there's too many cracks in the wa in the jar still leaking water, and as the Princess Popper realizes that they can't seem to stop it, they they utter something, and, and, and they rub the glass, and it's almost like it grows more defined crags, almost crystalline in form. Uh, it's like bunched it together, up. crashing up as if the volcanic earth from a primordial soup of strong volcanic activity and crashing primordial waves. And this, this prehistoric site upon the glass mends these new fragments over which seems to have drawn out a thinner but still whole uh containment but there's a crossbow bolt now floating around dripping down towards the brain and as the shaft touches it the whole brain quivers uh in a a, a clear sigh of discontent and Amex, you feel it just shudder thinking wrong 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 uh and yeah uh that is the Prince Popper's turn. Uh, they've moved, they've acted. Um, Vivian Halawa uh, is presently your turn. Ready to rock and roll. Okay. Um, hmm. Everybody seems not dead. Nothing seems to be terrible. Um, oh, I mean, Ametsa decided to go into this battle with, like, 3 HP for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not, like, a pro problem. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's this go into this battle thing? There, there's a bunny no one in danger the door in there. I'm not fighting anything. I guess that's I'm a little true for rabbit. now. If oh, there are, you know, two melee fighters... Yeah, so they, they... I'm I'm gonna stay here and you know you know give gave a good thought. I think I'm good where I'm at. Okay, and what, what about <laughs> and, and we're in this Crabulon holding position? Yes, Crabulon. Uh, Crabulon is is prepared to provide cover to I'll stop call, anyone. Yeah, just I'll, restrain yeah. anyone who's trying to pass. Yeah, okay. Well, so Crabulon, tier one henchkeeper, not willing to fight so much, but willing to drag out a downed friendly. They might restrain a prisoner, but I don't think that they're going to fight outside of direct duress. Yeah, well, you know, if someone's running away... They might... They, yeah, they might not run past Krabulon if they see uh, this lovely individual just kind of crabbing around. We are all crabbing around. Alright, so... Uh, I, <laughs> especially in, in Maryland, am. Yeah, we live in a Maryland yeah. society. Yeah, Old Bay... Yeah. Oh, side. I need it. We need to get a, a, a crop top for Cabulon that says "Old B A E." We oh <laughs> my fucking! Get, I need that crop also, top now. Are you that. kidding me? <laughs> All right, the Old Bay. Uh, oh my god! First official Diesel Shop merch, the Old Bay. Uh, okay. The old Viv. <laughs> uh, so Viv, that's that's your turn. That's your go. That's what'll be happening this turn. Yep. Okay, the cultists act. Uh, Dave. One of their numbers is down, and uh, there's been some serious hiccups in their plan. They are fanatic devotees, but they've been shook, and the, you know, Haas's negotiation line that was delivered well. We're going to see... Um... <gasps> they rolled morale. Uh -huh. yes. They're all doing great. Yeah, well, the, it's, 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 the thing is that, like, at being cultists, their morale is insanely high. Yeah, no, they're cultists. Like, they should be good at this. So, they yeah. will die for their cause, you know, at, mm -hmm. when we kill them. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so this cultist slaps. So, like, okay, so actually, here's what happens. Um, This cultist walks around... Like, kind of like gives like a combat lean around, sees a bunny rabbit, 
and a hostile combatant and like slaps the wall and utters something and Viv, you feel a disturbance in the air next to you as the floating jar begins to shift oh, and no. speed by you. Roll me a d20 to be Krabulon's evasion save, and uh, Daria, could you also roll me a quick evasion save? Is this, yep. is this a spell or a spell-like ability? That is an interesting question. Could you tell me what purpose you're asking for? Counter spell. Huh, that's interesting. Could... Are the principles? I would say that the principles that this is working on are counterspellable. You are aware of an acrid biting in the air, which indicates to you that a command has been issued, and you could sever the link of the command using your counterspell. Yes, I would permit that. So we see in the fiction, we see it hurtling towards Daria. Daria doesn't look like she's going to get out of the way in time. Krabulon also looks like Krabulon's gonna get shoulder checked by it. And as it happens, Viv, you're going for the counter spell? I am. I'm gonna make a charisma magic, and they have to make an opposed uh, charisma or intelligence magic. I'm going to say. The cultist isn't casting this. Beat the a system, 12. Beat a 12. Come the on, let's beat a 12. The system is casting this. Mm. The system mm. is not bad at what it does. It has received a command it will it's attempt to execute to 12. it. But it presently has a crossbow bolt on its brain and it lost some fluid. And it might have just been exposed to exterior pathogen. So it's not going to be doing hot. It does, not, it does not beat a 12. Oh right, no! Right as it's about to shoulder check Krabulon, it pops off and it remains there arrested. Dari and Krabulon have flinched, but they're not meaningfully impacted by this event now. Uh, meanwhile... Aren't you glad I'm here? Well done. <laughs> yep. Meanwhile, God. This, this cultist, um... whips out a mace and, uh, let's cry, um... The dead shall be born again! Go now! To the sepulchre that rises anew! And attempts to just stove in Renric Dome. You can see that they're like shitting themselves, right? Like fear is overwhelming their eyes, and they're sweating, they're shaking as they do this, Renric, but they're pushing on regardless because they are just, they're clinging to these mantras, these beliefs that they've done unspeakable things for as they fail to do more than slightly, you know, nick you on the shoulder, but it's still a mace flung at you, so you do take one damage from the shot. Aha, except, except that I have I have close combatant, so oh. I do not take shock damage from Pogo. melee assailants. Pogo? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Amazing. you roll, as you feel the impact, you roll your shoulder back and advance your stance forward to throw your assailant off balance. A practiced close combatant, seasoned pugilist of hardened stones of fist. Renric yeah, yeah. is unmoved. I've been waiting so long to <laughs> call on that. Renric, as the rock, is unmoved before the breaking of the wave. And, uh, yeah. Uh, the other cultist is out. Like a light. Like a light, bitch. And, uh, ask Fenborn right before you can move. Um, this green flicker steps into this mirror and emerges out of this one. Ooh. It, it Reaches huh. out with two copies of a phantasmal form of your own longsword. Makes a pantomime of the cut you did before towards both you and Renric. Um, cool. The blade is not formed nor put behind it the strength to strike at you. and Its ethereal nature flishes in and out and as if though an optical illusion merely passes through your body. Um, and oh, so... Oh, that's cool. I thought I was gonna put up a good fight. It, well, I mean, you know, roll the five on its attack. It doesn't want to do shit to either of you. Um, <laughs> it is Cass Fenborn's turn. Cass Fenborn, cool. how do you proceed? Yeah, so Cass Fenborn may be reckless, but she's not a fucking moron. Um, what are these mirrors made of? Or what, what are these, sorry, how are these mirrors affixed to the floor, if at all? 
Uh, they are not. They've been set up on stands down here. Amazing. I grabbed okay. it. Yeah, I thought the coldest were holding them, but then, you know, one of them just moved. <laughs> They're probably, like, up on stilts like this shit. I grab, I grab the mirror closest to me. You grab the mirror closest to you. Uh, yeah, um... <laughs> yeah, that seems like the smart way to handle this. To clarify, you've got a shield strapped to one arm and a sword in the other, so you're gonna reach out with your shield hand to, to, to do this, right? Um... No, she's gonna frankly, grab it with her teeth. I, yeah, frankly, <laughs> I sheathe my mirror. sword and grab the mirror. You sheathe your sword and grab the mirror. You can do this. Yeah, it will so render I, I'm you talking like, you know, a hefty two-arm grab on this mirror. Like, like this, you know? Oh my god, yes, I appreciate I that. <laughs> I love the prop work going on right now. Um, you know, uh, Pat really goes you above... You do something like this. Ah! Oh my god, you're giving me a heart attack. Let's not have too much real prop work. Oh my god, heart. <laughs> That's how Pat six laptop bit the dice. No! I don't yeah. fuck around. I don't use props, I use real items. Alright, Pat. Uh, you know, give me a dex exert to lift it. I have a question, actually. Are you attempting to avoid touching the green beam of light again? Um... I think this time I'm probably not trying to touch it. Give I don't think Cass is very give. intent on avoiding it so yeah. much as she is give me a dex exert. interested in fucking everybody's day up. Give me a dex exert. Alright. I should have gone higher in dex considering how much I roll it. Everything seems to be a dex exert. I mean, you, when you go lunging around everywhere. You lift. Man, one with Shaw, so that should be a nine. You actually, you lift it up, and uh, there's a, a a cry as if though uh, horrible, long yet elegant nails scrape across a glass ball in a dimension that rings throughout your ears, as if though a grand and terrible cacophony. Now, can I drop that shit on the pauper's head in one fluid? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. By, by the time, time the mirror is facing directly to the ceiling, you feel an explosion upwards and outwards as every bit of glass on it shatters up, flies towards the ceiling, points down, and everyone and everything in this room makes an evasion save oh as the broken ritual <laughs> unleashes shards of glass upon the whole room. What have I done? Oh, I made a great choice saying outside. Pass may be reckless. <laughs> but Cass may be reckless. I'm but like, Cass may be reckless. I think I see why Cass needs you. <laughs> wow. Uh, the cast well. survived. <laughs> well, so, you did have a large wooden um, panel. It, yeah, yeah, you had you had the base, you had the <laughs> all you 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 expertly use <laughs> all of it. Right At make me just roll me a d20 plus strength modifier because now you by the end of that, you've used the mirror to catch its own broken shards. And you now have a shard studded board, which you can now use as a melee weapon oh. against the Prince's Popper. <laughs> Fuck yes. Alright. What happens to everyone else? Well, oh okay, so you hit the Prince's Popper, so you can see his damage twice. Everybody else is sliced for five damage. Both of the cultists cry out and, like, Ow. go down. Um. Wait, did that kill the peasant that we were trying to save? Oh, exactly. Who didn't even get evasion save because he's like tied up or something? Uh, well, yeah, he already that's fainted that's and he's tied up, so there's absolutely no way he didn't get hit by that, nor the unconscious cultist. So they're both in a critical state as they are presently covered in glass shards and bleeding. Um, they fall through the, 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 the phantasm, but the phantasm seems to flicker out, although for a moment, Renric, it floats in the air and twists to be elongated and majestic, tall and chardful. As you gaze upon it, Ernric, roll me a mental save. 
as you glimpse something oh that ought not be seen by mortal eyes. Yes, Renric, you take a system oh. strain as your mind grows addled by the sights of the beyond. You need oh, more no. practice too, staring at too things much knowledge. Are supposed to be stared into by the mortal mind. Yeah, and uh, this whole room is also not difficult terrain. It's covered in glass shards. Or you could ignore the difficult terrain and make an evasion save to not cut your feet. Um, the Princess Popper takes 10 damage from both the falling shards and uh, Cass's attack. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's that's the the cast Fenborn uh, turn arena. I well, you still have movement actually. That was just your action. If you want to move, I think I think I just uh, you know for my movement I uh, drop the mirror on the ground and say, "Are you not entertained?" <laughs> not not really. She doesn't say that. That's, that's like. I was gonna say, I think you just like killed like two innocents and then massacred everybody. She, yeah, no, she she just drops the drops the back of the mirror and kind of looks at the devastation she's wrought and um, I don't know. For a move action, she kicks the Prince Popper's knee spitefully. All right. Ow. All right. So, a mess. There's a little bunny wabbit in the hallway. All right. What do they do? Uh, I am going to, to once again surface apprehension. This time I'm doing it on the Prince's Popper. Okay. And then in a very boomy voice that he can't quite, that hopefully he can't quite tell where it's coming from, I'm going to demand of him, what are you trying to do here? He has the most ignore where it's immediate surface. Thoughts for the surface of the planet. It's a good question. Answers? Okay. Yeah, I don't think he's doing it like in his head or anything. You're just yeah, no, like saying it in a loud voice, right? Yes, I'm just making okay. my voice loud as opposed to Ametz's normal whispery tone. Roll to voice act. So the Princess Popper is going to make a, <laughs> a, a mental save. Fail the mental save. And, um. You think, um. The thoughts come hot and heavy, uh, as the Prince's Popper's mind is addled and eldritch, the walls a color out of space, the tones unfit for mortal throats, more like a scraping of glass, but you comprehend their meaning. Uh, the Prince's Popper is thinking that they were trying to activate, activate the tram to reach the born destiny, and bring forth the ritual. And something about what they were doing really relied on what was happening here. But yeah, uh, you, that's that's what you get from the main action, and the general thoughts are pain, oh shit, oh shit, and I was so close to greatness. Now you may kill him. Uh, All right. And, like, I don't think anyone was waiting that. for your permission. Like, if we have a leader, it, it, it's Vivian. <laughs> right. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> you're, you're rocking the expo. Okay, What's the plan? my turn. Yeah. Okay, I want to go inside the room and uh, magically heal the, the peasant. All right, so... You're not going to be... How far can you be when you... Okay, you have to be next to him. If you want to make it this turn... Do I mean... Turn. I don't know if I do, actually. Uh, I think I probably do. But, I mean, I could just take a system strain and gain another turn. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to... I'm going to do that. Your Celeritus speed pushes you forth, and... Uh, yeah, you arrive, and you can now give... Uh, is it 
Is it even a check, or is it just like you do pop them up and they take a system strain? I'm just, if I do it magically, no, I just, you know, roll All right. well, for how much healing I do. Yeah. You um, can't fail magic. <laughs> you, In this uh, case, I mean, you can't You sometimes. quickly uh, remove the glass before the shards can spread intravenously, and... Uh, He's like, oh, as he gasps, still in pain, but very much alive, uh, uh, due to your quick ministrations. Uh, and you're under your hands as a skilled, gifted even, Shurugan. And that's Darius. And I'm going to be like, okay, Cass, be a magical item. So sometimes you approach with caution or ask a mage what to do before you play with it. <sighs> Renrick, um, You're right. Next time I'll ask it one again. foe remains standing. Someone to hell. There's glass shards all over the place, including your arm. Okay. Um. I guess I will go in and finish off the popper, or attempt to. Um. So I have enough normal movement to make it to him without a check, right? Correct. Yeah, because it's a difficult terrain. You can also step on the body between you and him. Shouldn't we restrain and question the pauper? Um, that is not a terrible idea. The pauper says, "You'll never get anything out of me." The pauper is seeking to uh, restart this. Station, which he or which seems to be in his mind a tram station of some kind, in order to summon some false god of his. The Prince oh, of Thorns is dead. The Prince of Thorns will live again. Oh boy. Uh, or not. I mean, uh, we all, if we kill we enough all. of your cult, maybe not. But so, so, so Ren, it's, it's, I so, do attempt to restrain him. Yeah, so it's Renrick's turn. So, um, yeah, so give me that unarmed attack, and we'll see if you pop him up. Yeah, with that, you set him to zero HP, and you, uh, you know, you use your fist for a non-lethal punch up, grab up, um, and he is, you know, uh, conscious but delirious yeah uh with that uh the fighting is over uh you do note daria it's important that to note that because we all brought chains instead of rope for this area that he has to be you know secured by chains i just want everyone to visualize that instead of normal wrap rope. around the chains but yes what i know it's daria you would note that there's another person who yet who yet draws Breath here that might be saved. The cultist to the west. Um, if you wanted to act swiftly, you could potentially preserve his life if you saw any particular reason to. Otherwise, you're certain he will expire. Like, uh, do do we need that other cultist? And, and point to him. Like he's he's still technically alive, but that that'll be different soon. Well, let me we see. Step to the leader and keep it alive. And Viv opens a small notebook and starts going through her notes. Uh, I would Let's say see. one cultist is uh, is plenty. True, true. I but concur, well. but the final judgment goes to Vivienne. By my estimation, I will so long say as you're willing to abide by her rulings, Daria. I will say this cultist that we have captured is uh, less than entirely sane. They're all less than entirely sane. That's the whole deal with these mirror You know fights. what? I'm going to save his life. It's not like we have a shortage of chains or like he's particularly good at his job. If we don't need him, then, well, I mean, we should probably transport him to a prison. But, like, you know, I could always just look away while, while something happened. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> because, you know, very I am not, that. like, the kind of healer who can bring people back from the dead. So let's just... I don't know, hedge our beds. Yeah, so, yeah it leaves more options open. Yeah, and... you, yeah. so uh, they breathe a heavy sigh and they're, they're, they're on the ground, kind of incapacitated, but uh, alive. Uh, they, they're, they're not conscious unless you directly choose to revive them, but you've healed them. Yeah, I'll leave the them unconscious unless we actually do need them, but well, I guess I'll yes. 
chain them up. Pull out the glass, bandage the wounds. I, I do sure turn to Renric. Yeah. Turn to I turn Renric. to Renric and, and Daria, at the, at the very least catching both of their eyes, if not, uh, you know, directly uh, speaking to them and say something to the effect of, by the way, I am sorry for how things turned out in there. That was uh, really uh, bad, uh, bad teamwork on my part. I should have uh, been a little less reckless. I'm very proud of you. That's very mature to say. Well, I'm a good soldier. Uh, at least, usually. This time I kind of fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your apology. Renneric says, as he's visibly wincing from the shard wounds. Yeah. is like, yeah, you know, I'm glad we've learned a lesson from this. Uh, picking glass out of the second person. Like, oh, Renneric, you're next, I guess. <laughs> oh, there's just so much glass in the flesh here. That was the so... part I was the most sure about, actually. The whole running in thing is what I was really worried about. I don't know how the fuck that mirror exploded so bad. Uh, because it was in the middle of doing magic. You still, and you still see the other, the other non-exploded mirror yeah. still has this, this now darkling glimmer, as if though uh, an eyelid shut over it, with which speaks of strange geometries within its unseen cavern, and you wonder. I grab that and give it to. Okay, you you you, you hoist it. It it feels it feels uh, more weightless than it should. <laughs> Thing. Um, what's its shape again? Shape? Yeah, rectangle. the weightless thing I'm being handed. It's a big rectangular, like, mirror. Like, like the prop. Ah. Maybe up to about your chest height. Interesting. Well, um... I'll see about fastening this on your armor if we're going to be heading home. Anytime soon. And she leans it up against the wall and, and just sort of stands slightly Yeah, so do you, do, you, do, you, uh, do you lean the mirror such that the reflective side is visible, or...? Well, no, that's going to get it broken. You just lean it the opposite, so if something hits it, it doesn't shatter. Cool. Yeah. Imagine that I have a reverse for this. Uh, but yeah, alright, so... You all witness this, and you see that... Um, there is still, like, a trickle of water coming from this, uh, brain's tube, or some liquid. Not sure, it seems cleaner, and it, it, it writhes in there unhappily as the, uh, blade of the crossbow bolt, the head, has slightly pricked its surface, and it, 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 it is unhappy. And you see this room slightly damaged, I mean, majorly damaged with glass shards now all over it, seems to rend and tear and ooze a greenish, clearish liquid from various pores atop the damage that was already dealt here via some grand and gorging incision. And you see marked about the room bits of chalk and salt now well torn by battle near where the glow of the mirrors was reflecting some lights between one another and some unknown ritual occurred. Kaz breaks out her maid outfit and broom. Okay, so I'm gonna be, I guess I'll turn to Amit and be like, so, like, do we, we need to help it? What, what, what's it doing? Is it good or bad? It's Does it do it's anything? It, I think it's controlling this whole place. Um, it's happy normally, though it's not anymore because, you know, an arrow is currently sticking in it. A little bit. Wonder where that came from. Huh. I wonder. Well, if you could at least stabilize it, that'd probably save us a lot of time and effort in finding another one, if it is useful. <laughs> another mm -hmm. giant brain in a jar? It's... It, again, it is running this whole place, I believe. I'm like, well, I mean, I could probably, like, one. fish the arrowhead out, but, like, I don't... Fixed well, glass. I, I'm a healer. The the hole is it's melted is over. the best way to put it. Yeah, the hole is patched over. It was just like from like two cracks that aren't quite fully sealed right. Some like liquid dripping out. Uh, the, the the top of it runs to the ceiling. The bottom to the floor. 
you see no way to open the casing. Hmm. Well, um, I look for a way to open the casing. You, you certainly could. Yeah. You could give me a whiz observation to, to to notice. Sorry, no, it's called notice in this game to try and look around. And um, rhetoric upon hearing <laughs> it's the. Back. Um, let's see. That's an eleven. It's, oh, you have to put a number in the modifier field, even if it, it's just it, zero. It used to put the zero there by I mean, default, normally... but it's not anymore. Oh it's, my god, seriously? It's either a Roll20 update they haven't accounted for yet, because it looks like Roll20 did a big UI update, uh, from what I can tell. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to jump to blame the sheet maker. Uh, but I haven't seen a few new commits listed in their Discord, so it's possible that they were accounting for something. I don't know. I'll report it after the stream. But yeah, you do, you have to manually add the zeros now. That's what I had to do for the other uh, skill rolls I did. So I like to say that's an 11, yeah? Mm-hmm. You do find that there is a space where some tubes seem to be meant to go, and one of those tubes has been removed, and you see it, you find it in the robes of a cultist, by now pierced by many shards of glass, irreparably. Um, and there seems to be a kind of metallic sphincter, uh, which bespeaks some orifice one could pass through in one direction, but not the other, uh, sheathed, as it were to uh, sort of manipulate uh, the inside, this is about the span of, you know, say, four inches across. Uh, it would be hard to get one's hand into, although an individual who is particularly, I don't know, uh, a verminous might be best suited for it. And I look at Ahmed's and I'm like, well, uh, you went to help this, right? What? Oh. Uh in the meantime, Renric is trying to look elsewhere in the room. Um, he's Lifts his all interest down. was piqued. Uh, yeah, so his interest was piqued by Ahmet saying that the brain controls the area, and so he's looking for some kinds of signs. Uh, like, is there a control panel? Are there, is there descriptive text? See sigils flowing across all of this this green uh, plant matter uh, constitutes the walls and ceiling, and there's shutters in it. Disruptions in the image that just to blend out into an oversaturated blur of nothing. Now these tidal waves that have been happening since the glass touring, you see some of it sinking through, tearing tiny little micros almost like ultra tiny netting was unseen over it, holding in the ooze uh, without any semblance of glass, as if there was a liquid wall. And now it's all tearing, distorting, and there's less and less visible. Give me int no with a negative one modifier as the knowledge you seek becomes less and less available by the damage to the room. Uh -huh. Okay, well I'm gonna say to Amit, like, uh, turn into something that can put your hand in this sphincter and you know you can fish the arrow out that's not and... exactly how it works well if you can become a rabbit or perhaps a snake we could simply hoist you into it entirely uh, how would i get out well you turn around of course we it is a one-way entrance seems hmm so, uh, hmm. Renric, um, despite its status, your earlier research on uh, in the rooms before gives you an insight here. You think that these are the statuses of things, opened or closed, opened or closed. Something designating an entity. Marks that appear to be punctuation, akin to maybe a slash, a parenthesis, and then an opened or closed, an opened or closed. They flow freely but they have a clear pattern. As you look to the different parts of the room, you can see where certain things should be. The gashed open bit of the room, Renric, you quickly tell, is deeply related to the nearby rooms and platforms. And someone has rooted around inside, gone through the wall to reveal um, dark stone beneath, etched with these rooms. And it, it, as you peer, it sparks with like a vague, like ethereal, uncolored light of just like illumination and, and, and dar darkness alternating. And you see these runes carved into the rock here, and it's like raw and exposed, and you can tell someone has etched something here. The markings seem familiar. Um, and that the etching is at the gash over here on the left. 
in the Oh, I would like to examine that. Sure. If I can puzzle out anything else. Sure, give me a, a, a... You immediately get struck by a sense of coldness and a, a reflective mirror in nature by the etchings uh, that have been put there recently, but give me a, a wisdom to get more. But yeah, so the, the, the brain conundrum continues as the water does slightly leak out a little. Um... Hmm. Sorry, I have extra hands. Can I be useful here? I'm like, uh, do you have anything that would, you know, seal two tiny elites? Like, I guess, I mean, probably a like stealer's glue. We could glue something to it, but, but I'm like, well, I mean, the fingers aren't I that efficient, and belts. also presumably we want to leave here. What do you have? Several wide belts. Intended for wrapping my armor to my altered form. Potentially they could wrap around the uh, exterior. They're leather, so it might be airtight. Would it? I, I feel like the water would just drip into the leather. Uh, better than nothing, but I see your point. I can't think of anything else I have that might be of use. Maybe we can, I don't know, do the coldest have anything else on them apart from this tube? Or could we use, like, part of its materials to, you know, block these? Yeah, let me do, like, kind of a general you, perusal of you the find, room, if you wouldn't uh, mind. Please. You find uh, a mace, two daggers, three short bows, um, and uh, you do find on the Prince's Popper some ritual equipment, which includes what appears to be some sort of, like, resin in uh, a translucent really? leathery skin with like a metal nipple that will let you like put some out and uh, by by study and recognition you feel this is some sort of uh, talking fluid some sort of resin which will hard heart dry quickly it will however require a craft check to do so uh, a dex craft okay well that's not my strong suit but I uh, I Plop it out uh, and kind of generally suggest to the group that if anybody's capable of applying this in a fashion that might be superior to my own, then they are welcome to use it. Well, I don't think I'd be more uh, competent than anyone else in that regard. I'm just going to um, assume that no one took craft. <laughs> well, that's fine. I definitely didn't. No, I'm it doesn't seem it like. Okay, who's the best dex bonus? Again, not probably, probably not Maybe me. Not. Amets I have a or plus uh, no. plus zero. I'm a zero. I have a plus one, so I, I guess well, I'll do that it. Well, does mean you are the one. Sorry, you do have nimble hands, <laughs> and though this is not shootering a, a bit of scalp over a skull, it does bear a resemblance, given there's a brain underneath. So you. You know, simply uh, think of that and uh, take to the squeeze and the mend with a little uh, embalming tool like a schlift of almost looks like a dentist's tool where such things common and you let it out and uh, as if though a painter going at her craft. So let's see that, that Raoul. It's a modifier of one because you have an appropriate tool. Oh, sorry. I already rolled, so. This is four. <laughs> You peel and crack at expert. the very small gap, and it's kind of a little worse than it was now as the rough fray of glass uh, tanks open, and it is now 85% full as an extra bevy of water comes out, and it uh, empties faster. Like, hmm. So, whoever decided to store their brain in a glass case did a bad job, I'm imagining like somebody goes to an engineer like so when someone shoots a crossbow into this brain case it goes poorly and the engineer just looking at them like I'm sorry what <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I can I do um can I do a secondary uh, crafting to try and mitigate the damage uh, uh, well given there's a big gap in it uh you don't have to pull up a tool for that yes but it's a negative one 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to uh, you know attempt to do the the thing with the um, with the resin and the uh, and the sheepskin, okay. and I'm just gonna go like whack onto the uh, onto the glass oh, tank okay. that's dripping liquid. Wait, so you're trying to like you're trying to like use this like a child used doing glue on a, like a, a craft paper project? I'm a fucking genius, yeah. <laughs> and because you examine this gash, you would see that the, the alterations that have been made seem to be um, to make it so that the tram will ignore safety precautions and depart for a destination it would otherwise not have accepted because, because it is listed as invalid and because parts of the track are lifted as off. Oh yeah, that sounds bad. Sounds and very dangerous. As you examine what would appear to be the logical extension here, it feels like there were so many empty... There were so many now, like, open nodes around it, so many off nodes. It feels like this would take you to some sort of intersection. As if, though, one where many of these trams once met. Uh, Cass, you managed to do a pretty good job of it, uh, all things considered. And you plop the whole closed... Uh, by the time it is only 80% drained. Um, Amets, uh, people have been asking you about shape changing, but you mentioned that's not really how it works. Are you going to try and do anything with the, with the sphincter, or are you, uh... I mean, I, I don't know if I wouldn't be the best to do anything with the sphincter. Alright, yeah. Uh, do you consider anything else in the room, or go about any other act? Um, is the, is the crossbow bolt actually an active danger to the brain, or is it just a... While the, while the liquid was draining, it, like, the way it was, like, nestled, like, in, like, the, the cleft of the brain tip, uh, the, the bolt's tip would occasionally be drawn down into the gray matter, and you can see a cut that's been pulled down into and is now less pulled into, but it's still around. And so there is, like, an incision into the gray matter equivalent of this brain now. Small, but noticeable. But the, the, be, now that the draining has stopped, the cross the bolt isn't a direct danger. Now that, yeah, I mean, there's now imperfections in the tube, and you can tell that there are, like, bubbles, and there is some movement within the tube that you don't quite understand... So it's not like a, nothing is ever going to change with this interior state of this tube that will make this a problem, but it's a, the active threat of the crossbow bolt okay. is gone and it's done its damage, basically. So I am going to be like that. It's, you're still going to need to remove that crossbow bolt if you've taken away the immediate danger. And I am going to try to make the brain forget about the crossbow bolt so it gets happier quicker. Holy um. shit. <laughs> All right. Gaslight brain. How? Also, have we figured brain. out if this thing is useful yet? Like, I mean, the fact that uh, that they say that it's going to like be able to All right, control this place to be, yeah. sounds useful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, does Arya actually say this out, out, out loud? Like yeah. We are supposed to keep this thing around. Um, it, okay. No, we don't know that. Is this even the R2? I thought this was like a side thing, like well, no, inside no, it that we don't normally see. R2, but we are. No, we to are, R2. but it's. Are we it's, even sure that this is the thing we're supposed to be fixing? Oh, I'm certain that this isn't the thing we're supposed to be fixing, but it's important and it could be of use to the Arcspire. So at this point, Renric would speak up and be like, "Um, guys, um, I figured it out. So, um." This is, this, Amets was correct. This is a control room for the rest of the facility. Um, and all those wobbly symbols uh, uh, on the walls are um, doors, I think, uh, indicating whether they're open or closed. Anyway, uh, he would point to the gash. The cultists were messing with all of that, and it looks like they actually managed to open a passageway to some kind of intersection of the facility. And I really think we should check that out. I concur. Seems like exactly where we have to go. What do you think, Fifth? That seems like a good idea. Perhaps it will give us a better picture of the rest of this place. 
then it's settled. And I'm like, so uh, what about our, our prisoners and, and, and this guy? Oh, Are you just up? let me tend to them. It's a bit dangerous. They would better be off. Uh, would be better off in my care, I think. We also haven't, uh, you know, interrogated the, this guy. We to really understand his plan. Oh, yeah. Apart oh, from, I guess. Oh, you leave them to me. Definitely. Um, well, the popper said something about a tram um yeah. it seems related to this gash thing i don't know if we're gonna get much more specific information from them well, well i'm like a bit to read minds right like it's probably worth asking another one or two questions and see if he gets anything i would suggest we move them out of this room whether or not because when they wake up, uh, they are light. They, the, the the robed one, at least, has magical powers. I do not want him to be able to affect anything. Oh, yeah, it can just affect us, then. Well, most spells require a somatic and, and, and physical component, so as long as we gag and bind him, he should be pretty much harmless. I know he wants to could I've roll like uh, an int prey about what we have just said. I mean, sure. This is true, but there is pl there are plenty of t types of magic that do not. I don't know about his type of magic. Yeah, Reno, that's not just real to be magic. clear about Those the... Are... Mm -hmm. Yes, Marlon? About the brain thing. Like, it doesn't sound like... I mean, I'm just assuming if the crossbow bolt is at, like, the top of the brain, like, there's no one... I can actually reach it just putting in my hand normally, right? Like, so like where it is because the sphincter is like tall enough, you actually think you might be able to, but it'll be at your fingertips. So, so it's like a vending machine when you try to get something. Yeah, out, it, it, it's gonna be like trying to. The, it, yeah, it's like when you're like reaching up in the vending slides. machine. Yeah, so it's not gonna be easy, but it's not. You don't look at it and think that's impossible. You think ah, that's gonna be rough. Yeah, I mean, I'm really not ready enough for this, but I, I guess I'm going to try it before we move on. Sure. And... Oh, wait, that's what we meant by verminous. Yeah, and Ra Renric, by the way, when, you, when, when Vim says that, you do think, you recall back your previous encounters with these cultists, and you think that sometimes it's less the cultist casting the spell and more the conduit, that their mind is the conduit for another graver working from beyond. And in that instance, some rules around manipulating the legacy and magic as you guys tend to is are laid. Uh, but yeah, yeah. what? So Sorry. He's operating on the rule of I want this to happen. Uh, basically, <laughs> just that like, well, yes, like most casters need some act, you need verbal, and you can't cast a spell if you've been hit last turn. But that's not always yeah. true of uh, the cultists of an eldritch entity if they are unfurling the powers bestowed upon them by the beyond. That's very frustrating. I wish they would teach us in our expire school how to do that. Yeah. It's less something they do, and more a way that they are used like a single gloved finger of a great many fingered entity. But yeah, speaking uh, of fingers... Metaphors so this, metaphors this. that. It's power that I don't have. So, Daria, uh, this is going to be so a... So you join the cult? You're in control of your power, Viv. In my experience, you being in control of things is generally good for the world. Oh, you know how to cheer a lady up. So, Daria, give me a dex exert. I didn't know you were down, actually. <laughs> Great. <laughs> my hand will get stuck in here to spend the rest of the adventure. In this frame too. <laughs> oh no, because it actually hurts him, then he'll realize it's there again and be upset again. That's sad. Okay, so you go for it. You grab at it, it, it leans forward, the brain is not happy, it, it twitches after being calmed. Uh, there's a drink of some, like, pinkish substance that could be its blood, who's to say? And, um, you... You, you like fumble at it and it, it, it just it, it flows just beyond your grasp. You can make one more dex exert at a minus one to like seize it before it falls. 
Oh god. You got this. I believe in you. Oh. Positive reinforcement. If you can't do that, can you try it? Some really dice rolling works. You, you. I was gonna say, if you don't think you can grab it, you could try hitting it all the way across the, the fluid so that it just clasps. Yeah. When it falls, well, it would just. Well, fall so what happens, Royce? You you grab it like the the feathered end of the bolt, and you don't you you manage to, like twist at it and like get it away from because it's about to ca carve and like carve through the cleft, cutting on its way down various membranes. You knock it to the side, and it clink clink falls it's in there on the floor unless something really major shakes this whole thing it's not gonna move and hit that thing again but the brain um there hasn't been a loss of liquid but you feel as if the brain is perhaps at oh i don't know 75 percent of something worse for wear although it's calmed down Ooh. after a moment uh, can i just with draw my arm yeah, you, you may withdraw your arm. There's nothing stopping that from happening. Okay. All right. I think this is going to go on the 20 grossest things I've done in the healing-related context. Yeah. <laughs> Cass is like, Cass Path, do you say that out loud, Darian? Yep. Cass pats you on the back and says, Oh, if I were there, that wouldn't even top my top 20. Knowing you're normal, the people you're normally healing, I doubt that. Well, I mean, I don't really generally heal, but in context. So yeah, you are back in this light floored hallway, the ominously still float of the uh, massive container behind you still, and there are two hostages and a prisoner who comes to, looks around and says, oh, as new gods and the old, what has happened? Where are my companions? Oh no. He oh, shakes, shakes his head as if remembering. Very unfortunate news. Ah, no, I remember now. These terrible men. They came. They killed us. They threw that pot without touching it and caved in the Chevalier's head. He was the only one of us who could have put up a fight. Ah, I have lost everything. And I have lost again. You are from that strange land, yes? The Arkspire? Yes. Yeah. He looks around at you, he sees Viv, he sees cast his spikes, and Viv, what percentage system strain are you at? Uh, I'm only at 20%, so I think I'm actually pretty good. Oh, nice. Uh, he doesn't see anything, but you see some strange things going around. He's like, ah, oh, yes. Well, I owe you my life. But I do not know where to go from here. Uh, we tried to weather a storm down here. I do not think I can go on on my own. I turn to Viv. Oh? I... As if to suggest, you should speak to him. Well, give me a little bit of room. Ah. <sighs> Take a deep breath. You went through something very traumatic. We don't want to make any rash decisions when we're not in the right headspace. Uh, and he says, ah, you are correct. Please, I have been so rude. You have saved my life. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Monsieur Dumaison. And I am Vivienne Helois. A pleasure. A of the Arkspire. Of the Helwa Helwa, the trade family, no? Yes, exactly. It's uh, it's quite reassuring that you know us still. We haven't been operating huh, at max capacity for quite some time, it feels like. Ah, uh, we, well, uh, uh, my country has not been operating at much capacity either. So, yes, I am Monsieur de Maison. I am a mason by trade. I cut the stone, you know. Carve. I'm a carver, if you will. Oh, we get along well with carvers. Please <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> if you uh, if you do need a place to stay or work by chance, um, we at the Ark Spire are looking to do a few uh, renovations, and we would love to have you assist in any way if you are willing. Yes, oh yes, it would be my pleasure. Please. 
Uh, and he, he seems eager to... He seems like an eager beaver. Um, although, uh, Krabulon gives you a dialogue saying, You can only have one companion in your party at a time at Henchkeeper level. <laughs> You'll have to choose if you'd like to send me back to the hideout or bring uh, Monster to Maison with you. No, no, Krabulon. I think you're still my preferred companion. I'm just giving him a chance to uh, get back on his feet in a productive manner. But Maison's like, ah, I appreciate it, although I will put a disappointed dialogue here. Uh, to shame you into picking me next time. Uh, I, will, uh, I, will, uh, I will await you at the entrance. And he, you know, he, he's around and maybe I will ask him a question, otherwise he will await you uh, at the entrance. Um, you got two prisoners. Um, okay, well, who cares? We're, we're done with the prisoners. Darius, like, yeah, we, we, we've spent a long time in this place. So, you guys mentioned, like, an intersection, a new passage. Do you have an idea where it is? Or are we just back to exploring? Do I have any idea where it is? Facility? Uh, Renric, uh, you... You think that putting together what you see here, what you saw there, you could... The room you were in when you first came down had buttons that would send something to a location. You think that what they didn't hear was work to unlock that button. And now that button should be available to you back there as long as you touch the appropriate bit of wall when it floats by in here first. Hmm. Um, say, sorry, say that last part again, as long as what? You touch the appropriate bit of wall in here first. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, I tell the party I have an idea slash clue and I search for the appropriate piece of wall. Alright, yeah, you find pretty easily. It's right by the, 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 the wall here, uh, Renick. Um, but you also see that so you foot by, you reach out, you touch it. It glows green and sparkles and crackles, laying off a wave as of roiling electricity. And then you guys see the blue water turns green in the tube and you see bands of light but as they reach up to the liquid free top it grows red and lightning crackles <laughs> the brain shudders a little Renric, uh the brain is at 75 percent stability roll me a d100 you're hoping oh, for the light Ooh. Anybody got anything in the audience? You know, a little day just to go along, mm. little bits for the play re-roll, anything going on, anything you want to add, oof, 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 anything oof, you might be able to do. Oof, oof, oof. Oh, yeah, Frederick, we don't have a big Frederick, one. you wouldn't have to be a pure expert, would you? Actually, wait, you are, aren't you? Uh, oh, yeah, can I use my re-roll on this? It's a new scene, yeah, you're, you're an expert at this. Uh, fuck it. Yeah, give me that D100 again. I was like, oh, not quite Hell like yeah. that. <laughs> and, yes, the brain... Scene. The brain settles up, roils off, and you hear a ding, and you get the sense that um, the, the, the matching glyph in the next room is ready, and that after it's pressed, there'll be 60 seconds, and then a, something should depart. Um, some, uh, they said something on a... a the, I met to mention something on a tram, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, Alright, so I walk back out, and I'm like, okay, I think I just primed the tram mechanism. But we should find where the tram is first. Wise decision. What's over here? This room. That's, that's this is the room where the skeleton. Works. Yeah. So this is that's the skeleton, skeleton room's northern door, which you know is caved in by a boulder falling on the on the south side. So it's an oper an inoperable door, though yes. it would have functioned, uh, you know, when this place was first made. I will say, I for no particular reason, your mind drifts back to the first room you entered and how it's got this long, one might almost describe it as a track, that seems to carry on in similar smooth fashion out towards the east as far as your eyes can see. With the grates. With the yes. grate, which was the only thing on yeah, that track that wasn't depressed two to three off. feet. Yeah. Uh, let's go check out that first area. Sure, and uh, I great. I'm excited for whatever a trim is. Does any, uh, so I have a question. Uh, who who commits the murder? By which or it does that happen? <laughs> oh yeah, no. I wait for everybody to leave, and I kill them. Okay, does everyone just like walk off like with cast behind, not really thinking about that? 
or thinking you're not yep. giving a shit? Well, yep. Viv, Viv, Viv probably knows and, and I mean, did a little bit of mental math on uh, whether she could keep them enthralled, but that would probably be too much of a lie. I, I mean, like, I think at, at various very obvious points, I wink at Viv as if to suggest, <laughs> tell me to do otherwise. But, like, everybody in the party saw me, like, conspicuously winking at her. So it, like, does not take <laughs> very right, much so. mental yes. math to figure out. It's, 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 it's a reclaimer being left with prisoners. I know what happens. I'm curious. <laughs> so and, and, and you, 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 you are it's like, oh, no, how could we have left those prisoners with the reclaimer? It's a tragedy no one could have foreseen. Yeah, you see some, you see some spheres with some circ with uh, some of the circular spheres, some of them glowing in this room as you pass by. The same ones that got put in the wall when they were I, I do, but I do, however, linger uh, mm -hmm. here because I want to see how fanatic, like how fanatical they are for, for future reference. At what point before dying do they start to feel fear as their primary emotion? The, oh my! Well, this was wow. already afraid when it was trying to fight Renric. Uh, I know, speak I mean, to Renric. Do you want to be healed? About... Speaking of, speaking of, okay, before before we finish, before they finish them off, I'm going to stick behind with with Cass and do just one last thing. I'm going to take a little cultist prisoner aside, and I'm going to, uh, you know, gently give give him the uh, the Helwa shuffle and see if he's interested in changing his mind. Fair enough. You know, like wake him I up. I think I'd take my time with the pauper. And try. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. Just, and, just a gentle wake up. Okay, and you try and like use like the spell on him. No, no spells. I mean, I can always use a spell on a sleeping person. Just right. um, ask and see. It's like, here's your last chance. Your boss has abandoned you, and you have a bunch of glass shards that we already pulled out. All right. You did a good job, and I'm sure everyone will appreciate your enthusiasm. Right. So you, 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 you attempt to recruit. You chance. attempt to recruit a, a cultist devoted to a dead outer god. Uh, Fabulon presumably stands by, like carrying uh, some bags. A Mets lingers. Daria, yeah, Daria offers Renric some healing in a hallway where they are now alone. Yeah, it's like, hi, I thought the rest of the party was behind. I'm doing it for him. I'm just seeing if he's going to be willing to overcome himself and grow. Into carrying Vivi's bags. Exactly. Step up for being a death cultist. <laughs> listen, listen, cults are just an organized simp. We, we need to, like, redirect that towards something productive, oh, like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can be the elder god of everyone's dreams with your support. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't wait for the, uh, for the, the Viv of YouTube debut. So yeah, some some healing goes on. Oh, yeah. I mean, Viv already has like a VTuber getup to be. The, the the healing happens in the hallway. <laughs> you guys back here, Viv, give me a convinced minus one to even get a chance at this person to roll in his morale again. He when he opens his eyes, he gasps. My soul is spoken for. I have gazed beyond. And then uh, he he you, you see her crunching. You see blood. Does that mean slicks onto your foot? He just bit off his tongue and spit it on your foot. As his mouth gurgles up with blood, his eyes roll back and he dies. Well, I got a seven. You got a seven? <laughs> I'm seeing a four. Yeah, it says a four, but I re-rolled once, and I rolled it as a four instead of a three. All right. So it's All plus right. one, minus one, three plus seven. I, I, okay. Um, Viv is going to take the tongue and say, okay, I, I respect that. Do you want to rethink your choices uh, now that that is... Uh, you no longer have what to profess you your, 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 your Amazingly, cultists. amazingly, the, uh, the cultist mm -hmm. does fail the morale save. They, they look at you uh, kind of like, you know, helplessly and unable to speak. Aww. She uh, she pets at the bloodied exactly mouth and like. cheek of this cultist and then gently wipes the blood off on his jacket. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Cass, you kill the pauper. Uh, James, uh, you know, he feels fear, like you know, like as like the, the, the pain occurs, he dies. But um, it's a muted fear, strangely warped, as if though more a reflection of a true emotion, and less the article, as if though the action occurs some far star field from here. Um, 
Viv, uh, the, uh, you, you can tell this man wants to live, but he's not really gonna be, uh, of use to you, nor is he really interested in being a joiner again. He just doesn't want to die. Okay, so six hit points. So do, well, you, do you spare his I, uh, life? I ask him gently if he would be okay, um, spending some time asleep and allowing his body to be used by a force greater than him. I know cultists are into uh, that. He looks really scared, <laughs> uh, and I uh, can't really communicate with you on kind of like bit off his fucking tongue. Well, you can shake your head and nod. I I promise we'll take good care of yeah, you, so and you won't have to worry about a thing. He backs up and he nods. His, he shakes his head. No, it almost seems less like directed at what you're saying and more at the implications. I'm so glad you agree, and I cast the ineluctable shackles. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that is D100. Um, he fails his mental saving throw, uh, and uh, unsurprisingly, yeah, it'll do. It'll do what you want. Well, head back to the Ark Spire, introduce yourself to the Reclaimers, and assist with any sort of uh, things that need to be moved around. Amazing. So introduce himself. Introduce himself. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's just cruel. So he's still chained up. Do you unchain him? Um, yes. I mean, he's practically harmless. All right. Yeah, you guys see a cultist just kind of like I guess you walk. I, I, by the way, I tap him as he goes uh, on the on the shoulder and say, "Tell them Viv sent you." Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think he knows what you're saying, but okay. He departs. Uh, you're not sure what will come of this, uh, but after all I've said and done, and some screening is done to Renric, uh, you, uh, you guys find yourselves, uh, headed towards the, the southern room. And I'm like, uh, about... I mean, you know when, like, you know, when people's tongues come out, like, I think that's an artery, like, you know, without medical treatment, he's probably gonna die. Also, I'm well... confused because I thought he was going to die. Oh, well. You never give up on someone, Daria. That's that's the whole thing. You always know that deep down there's something good inside. And I'm glad we managed to find it with him. Also, uh, how good of you to hmm. assume that the reclaimers just indiscriminately kill those that they have in their clutches? And I'm like, oh, so what what happened to the other one? You, they, you, oh, you, and you, 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 killed them. Yeah. You, de you definitely <laughs> heard like the sound of the boys. <laughs> We checked, and it didn't seem like he would be willing to uh, try it t to turn over a new leaf. And so we turned over his leaf. I suppose that's what yeah, you Yeah, unlike the enthusiastic yeah. support of the guy who clearly bit off his own tongue. He did that out of fear of change, which is why most people do what they do. I'm scared of growth. <laughs> the group proceeds to the platform. Uh, you are, Renwick, you see the button that you have to press to send it, and uh, there is, uh, again, the green grate, and as you look at it, you feel as if though the groove it's in would be, you know, well suited for propelling something along, and the only thing slotted into that groove right now is this platform, these grates. You'll have 60 seconds after pressing the glyph before it departs. Uh, okay, like so it's safe like to assume that this or? is the tram. Um, okay, so I, I tell the party, uh, I think what we need to do is press the button and then stand on this grate. Um, are we good to go? Works for me. Ready when you are. So All as right. we're traveling, depending on how long it takes, I would appreciate some healing. Uh, and I'm like, uh, we have no idea how fast this platform will move but yeah i would do that first heal you now <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i'm assuming you stop to heal on that's before you begin before you press the button yeah okay so yeah when i'm doing first aid it's double so 10 hit points and of yeah. course one system strain with every healing hey all right oh by the way i did reach uh 25 percent yeah daria as you've been a suitor in rhetoric you see like it's a, it becomes ha too hard to pierce the flesh guys. as you see this like you know stoniness overtaking the skin i'm like ouch that's rough and i'm like 
don't worry about it. It happens. Yeah, and uh, you guys step aboard what feels as if though an iron horse. Uh, and 60 seconds after the button is pushed, there is... Well... How... F how are you guys standing on stroke being on this grate? Um, I'm, I'm going, going to st stand rather prominently towards what I assume is the front here, and kind of just like chest out, uh, warrior's pose, ready to take on. I'm going to like lie down I'm and grip to... into the grate as firmly as possible on my front. Uh, I am going to just be sitting because you know lying down is real weird. And I, but I'm in human form because I was just healed, so I'm just chilling, sitting on it, on it, Ma ready to grab onto the grate if it goes real okay. fast. But I don't expect it to be going that fast. Okay. And um, I just kind of stand in the middle. Okay. So you guys see light bing across these broken, uh, these these glass linings. In some places, the discs are completely broken. In most, they are shattered. Uh. And the initial thing that happens is the platform jumps up two feet and then bangs back down into the groove after the edges warp a bit. And then, uh, like, a lightning crackling along the edges, it speeds you forth. Uh, yeah, so, uh, if you are lying down, and if you're doing what Daria is doing, you don't have to make a test here. If you're standing up. Make a physical save if you are sitting down like a uh, Mets. Give me a physical save with advantage. God casts a Chad. Yeah, simply stands at the <laughs> floor. Alright. Viv is going to be sitting down. Yep. Alright. Seems so like a, uh, a poor, poor decision. Alright, a Mets is fine. Oh boy. Oh, come on! Right, so Viv... I'm not even going to roll the second one of my. If Crabulon, like, hunkers down and tries to grab you with the crab head, and succeeds, uh, Renric, you fall oh, onto Daria God. with a poof thud. Uh, give me a dex exert to recover yourself after gently impacting your companion here. Alrighty. This is the point at which people start shipping, and they are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only ship is Casviv. That is the, the best ship. Kaviv? Vass? What is our ship name? God. Fenwa? Vass? Hellborn? Vasswa? <laughs> Hellborn! Yes. Hellborn's good. Hellborn's uh, good. So you guys Go shoot on. off at a dizzy <laughs> speed. Ashley describes the ship, too. Um. Lightning crackling at the edges, the platform rattling under you in the tight band of the groove, somehow buckling. Uh, when the bits below you get too broken or fragmented or missing, there is sort of like a sh -sh 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 rushing of wind, the air striking across you hard. Uh, this whole experience is slightly dizzying, and uh, you see rapidly a light at the end of the tunnel approaching after a moment. It seems like this just goes out into space. You see floating mist. You see heat. You see suggestions of clouds above, and also crackling lightning. Uh, ha you guys are still in more or less an identical hallway to what you're in. There's a five foot band to either side that's just standable. There's two to three feet below you guys. The occasional broken shards, and you're either standing or down. Um, which, you know, Viv, I'm assuming you hunkered down, so only Cass is still standing, really. Probably will be down with you. Yes. So, uh, what would you guys do as you hurtle towards what looks like uh, an exit where the rail stops existing? Um, probably try to roll off the platform onto the ground. Alright, um... You're down, but you're I already... I think Cass has learned at least a little... Alright. Um, you're gonna you're gonna do what, Cass? You're gonna lean back? Yeah, she's gonna lean back in preparation for a quick stop. Um, right. Kind of like All she's right. surfing. Those of, you, those of you who are bailing out uh, around now, roll me a dex exert. Uh, sorry, a strength exert to see how well that goes. Alright.
Renner is just bracing. <laughs> as best as he can Assistant. after falling. <laughs> Basically what I'm uh, doing too. Daria, you take one bludgeoning yep. damage uh, from the uh, uh, scraping your knee as you whirl off at high speeds. And a little, little lightning spark dances from your face. I'll take it. So wait, so Viv, you also want to roll off. What's the difference between your strength and dex mods? Um, my dex mod is zero. My strength mod is negative one. <laughs> All right, you also because take I am one an incredible, damage. incredible creature. Take one damage as you bail the out. The entire six of my health. Good God. And we see Krabby on off as well. Renric and Cast, you're holding firm. Amets, what about you? Uh, I am just waiting. I okay. trust. I trust the the creations of the outside, mostly. So, uh, you guys, uh, Daria and Cra and Crabbyon and Viv make their jumps just as the speed gets really fast. You guys find yourself at the abyssal edge, a wave of heat and buffeting cold swirling uh, above you. Uh, Cass, you're at the front, surfing the train as it juts out over this massive abyss deep into the earth that these uh, stone struts descend into. Uh, I'm assuming you want to bail out at this point. <laughs> or do you want to... I mean, is it falling? <laughs> the rail it is between... Is it just going to keep going? You don't know that. You know that the thing you're... The, the, the track ends, that's what you know. Yeah, got okay, so no, she's not going to bail out. What she does do, however, is run backwards as far as she can with intent to jump off the side in a badass, uh, like, superhero dive. Mm -hmm. Not dive, necessarily, but like Okay, jump. so you're trying to jump off the back. Uh, give me Damn, but we all know superheroes land like that. Yeah, give me a strength exert. Knee down, uh, fist up yeah. pose. Give me a strength exert. Yeah, the three-point landing. All right, well, that that about works. By the way, charisma and strength, same modifier. Okay, yeah, you all... Uh, by this time, you're taking uh, 2d4. So you take eight bludgeonings, you crack onto the crete here, and uh, Ooh, give me an evasion ow. save to see if Jesus. you manage to, you know, scrap your way up here. Uh, Ametz and Renric, y'all staying aboard, right? The Arcanists with their faith? Their great faith? <laughs> Yeah. Cass, you you, Cass, they warned you about things. Cass, you roll down your spikes like Tom into every rock on the way dying. down. And you like wind up in a, a, a crutch here, uh, taking Ouch. an additional six bludgeoning damage. Mets and Renric. Brian Lee. Ouch. Additional The thing you are riding I that was on, to mitigate. Uh the ev the evasion save was about the fact that that you, whether or not you were going to be able to hold on up there or roll further down. You just rolled like a further 20 feet down rocky terrain, bumping the whole way. Uh, Mets and Renric. Okay, alright, alright. So I take 12 you, you, damage. You, you fly, in, you fly out into the abyss that begins to lower. Uh, it's clear to you that like these plates are beginning to break apart as they descend rapidly with nothing beneath them and you fly through the gutted struts of this open cavern in the earth. Uh, both of you make me an int no at the same time. Alrighty. Well, one of us will succeed this. Yes, you are about to die. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> that, that, that's what you get anything under 12. If you get a 13 or up, the answer is like some sort of like mind blast. Frederick, like, this must yeah, be the hole that it was left by the structure that left here. And at its base, something beneath it. These these rails once ran to it, but they've clearly gone now, and this thing has lost uh, what was keeping it up below. This would have been locked off of the network if not for the modifications made by the cultists. Uh, you could ride this to the ground, but it's going to be a terrible crash hurtling through heat and lightning and cold, or you could try and bail off and maybe grab one of the concrete struts that runs along the abyss's edge all the way down. Uh... Or you could try and ride it down. Either way, it's going to be rough. What do you go for? Or you you have a, you have a wingsuit. <laughs> I do. You see a Mets is here. A Mets, what are you thinking? Can you say this? Um, yeah, you, you, so Renner, do you say anything to a Mets? I, at this point... Uh, so just to confirm, at this point, it's very clear that it's falling. It is gonna mm -hmm. fall hard all I the mean, way down. I mean, it was to pretty the, clear it was falling before this, but 
The descent. You, you yeah. took the whole ride and the magic carpet okay. is descending rapidly. So what I would then attempt to do is grab a Metz and try to glide as best as I could. Right. And as, as you do so, I will c condense myself into my rabbit form. All right. So, so Renric, like a wing form? Yeah. Renric, you pick up a Metz and look. Oh no, God! I don't my, have my... the ability to have wings. You're like, oh God! I can't spread my wings for the wingsuit with someone. And then a Metz is a like twist is a bunny rabbit. And you're like, oh okay. And a Metz just like like chills yeah. in. Uh, your fucking, like, cloak as you spread your wingsuit and, uh, glide, uh, out into, uh, the lightning and the buffeting warm airs as the gas mixes with the heat from the earth here and it penetrates down and it swirls. <laughs> you see, uh, omens in the distance pass. Some of your spikes have broken off. You're kind of fucked up. Uh, you're taking some serious pain. Uh, and you, you gaze upon this, like, charred like hole in the earth uh and um yeah you look down and just get a feeling of of foreboding but also of destination and you see that these uh struts they go down a steep diagonal but you could climb them you could walk down them actually uh although you would have the risk of walking downhill where your ankles might trip up but it takes you straight down to the center, to below where the module that flew off would have gone. And I think before even conferring with her partners, before even asking for aid, before doing anything else, um, she's going to go ahead and start staking the uh, the thing for uh, for climbing gear purposes. All right. Yeah. So you 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 begin you 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 survey out this thing and you climb up across the strut and you get it all uh, staked out. Um, Daria, Viv, you witness this. Uh, and and then, and then I yell over here. Yeah, I think. And I'm like, Cass, wrong, wrong direction. What are you doing? As long as she's not actively falling, I'd say it's an improvement. Be you, safe. You do see like uh, Renwick, you like join me. like Batman wingsuit that. gliding towards the bottom center, and the roiling of the gases and the strange miasma that seems too close yet far. And it's shots of lightning up and down from the ground, huge red and teal <laughs> waves of heat rippling the air like the edge of a mirage. And as you look down, you feel as if though this is the place. Where destiny is born. And take to your system a, of a, as one born to this Ark Spire or coming upon it yet living this pastoral life here in the Arklands of the of the mortal seasons of life and death and human concerns. Gaze upon such grandeur and otherworldness. You experience a profound sense of culture shock. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I assume Daria might, you know, first aid cast uh, between sessions, but that's... I mean, I have to, yeah, I'll have to get there, but... Yeah, uh, that, that's, uh, that's where we're calling it for this session. Thank you all for coming out. Fool's Moon Entertainment makes this possible every week, so let me take a moment to say thank you to Fool's Moon. The link's been on the screen the whole time. Exclamation mark Fool's Moon in the chat brings it up. Uh, check them out. They're on Twitter. They've got a whole entry. They've got a Patreon. They really do great work. And I think they're worth checking out. And they make this stream possible by supporting us. Uh, there's a wonderful community of Worlds Without Number players out there uh, as well. You can check out their Discord. Uh, the person who makes the sheet is there. I'm going to let them know that we had some problems with it. If that's not already in the content feed. Because I see there is an update to the Roll20 sheet. Um, that being said... Uh, if everyone could pop me their favorite scene, and then we'll go on a raid, beginning with... Oh, fuck. This is saying that you're a Veer Marine the whole time. I'm sorry, Madeline. Oh, was anybody else is fucked up? <laughs> uh, well, everyone else. No, it's the also it's also F showing Daria. It's, I, I just, there's a slight Madeline, change Madeline, the Chad Veer Marine. <laughs> Alright, so... It's... 
Spot like just like one one standout for you personally, and then we'll pop the raid beginning right to left, Madeline. Um, I thought that the mirror powers were cool in that scene, and I love this map that we're currently on. Yeah. This is really cool vibe. Thank you. Yeah, I made this map in like 20 minutes, worried that I didn't know what to do, and it wound up beautiful. So shout out to Pat for the pixel art and Lee for the execution. Uh, and yeah. uh, with that, uh, let me hear it from Harvey. Um, well, I think I have to pick the hurdling off the edge of a cliff <laughs> finale. Um, I like this cliffhanger. That's a cliffhanger that isn't combat, right? <laughs> and, um, and Renric is never going to go out without his wingsuit ever again. I did not realize how infinitely useful the wingsuit was going to yeah, be. That, that one faction sense. influence rule changed everything. Those of you who think about faction influence, remember, it can change everything. Um, of course, the well is dry, and while oh, James yeah. is here, can't can't boost his faction. Um, but yeah, excellent <laughs> scene, excellent choice. Thank you. Uh, goop, goop me. I like the mirror exploding. I like magic going awry, and I like the, the tactile aspect of just throwing wrenches and things. It's fun. Of dimensions and things? It's really cool. Throwing wrenches into things, sabotage, blowing stuff up, but like seeing how it blows up. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Yames. So, yeah, I, I like fact that it was a combat where only half of the people did anything combaty, or half of the party did anything combaty, and we all I, I, I speak for myself but but I really enjoyed my non-combaty parts in combat and I also really really liked the train er, the tram sequence where we fall, everyone slowly falling off yeah. and deciding when to bail or yeah. not to. And hack. Uh... Uh, what was the what was I'm gonna um, scene for you mirror Vin's answer and say that I liked when the uh, mirror exploded. I thought that was a very interesting development I was not expecting. I kind of thought I was gonna be innovative and decide to break the ritual and damage somebody in well one fell swoop without repercussion. But no, there was a there was a response to my action. That was interesting, that was fun. Yeah, I mean I, response that did you know, knock up the other coldness, yes, to be fair, like, like, it did exactly what it needed, someone. what I wanted it to, but yeah. it had a price. Yeah. All that said and done, uh, we're gonna raid Party Web Games. Uh, thank you all for coming out, and don't forget our sponsor, Fool's Moon. <laughs> Until next time, keep dreaming. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace. Coach Shark, Coach Shark, Focus Air, Focus Air.